After a 2-3 and three start, could this become the best season we've had in the practice squad franchise? Welcome back, everybody. It's week six, the bye week. With two straight wins, the Seahawks are perhaps showing some improvement this year. We're scoring 24.6 points per game after 20 points a game last season. I'd like to see us run the ball better today. That was kind of an issue in some of the games we went through yesterday. But we have some high hopes for this year, and I think for us to reach them, we're going to need some extra rest and relaxation here. That plus seven morale on a losing team is just too valuable. In the games we simulated yesterday, we didn't have any interceptions for Pat Whitworth as he shows some improvement there in that department. But in the matchup we had watched, there were three interceptions, and that game seemed to snowball out of control on him. As soon as we exit the bye week, Ashari Crosswell, breakout player opportunity. He's been playing free safety this year over J.R. Reed. Just similar ratings, he's younger, and now he too could have star development. The 1-5 Colts do end our little winning streak here, 27-22, as we fell short in the fourth quarter comeback, 16 fourth quarter points. Two interceptions, though, of Carson Wentz, two sacks, two more scores for Pat Whitworth. Jonathan Taylor, good rushing day for him. Receiving, we have Terrace Marshall, eight catches, 62 yards. He's put up some really consistent production this year without me having to list him as the slot receiver. So let's go to defense now. Javen White had a sack and 11 tackles. Interceptions went to Isaiah Johnson and Miles Hartsfield. How about safety Ashari Crosswell? Anything here? I don't think he's getting the boost. Four tackles, no sacks, no interceptions. Coach, I've put in a lot of work this year, and I'm finally starting to see the results on the field. Did we accomplish the game day goal instead? I always forget about that part. But we must have. 20,000 XP, star dev, Crosswell does get it. After all, four upgrades. This could change his entire career. It should. Zone upgrade first. Speed is nice. What's his speed at here? We're looking at 91, which is definitely enough. Now his tackling is a bit low. High hit power, so very boomer bust in run defense. And we'll upgrade this a couple times. Nice plus three. That's pretty clutch. I don't mind a hybrid upgrade here. Man coverage skills would be pretty cool. Plus two. It's actually doing what I wanted to do here for the upgrades. Last one into run support. Three more man coverage. That's going to take it up to 69 man, 81 zone. That's pretty solid. And then we have Pat Whitworth, who is now a 67 overall. And... He gains vision, short accuracy, under pressure with this upgrade. Definitely needs some deep accuracy soon. He likes to throw it downfield. And now we're playing the team whose offense we basically stole. The Baltimore Ravens are undefeated. We're playing this game in the rain, and I want them to run the football. And we lose the game 45-24. I did not expect us to win this one. And we did not run the ball well in this game. Lamar Jackson, 72 yards. J.K. Dobbins, 75. But Savan Ahmed, just 39 yards on eight carries. He gave up on it. Although we lost by 20 at the end of the day. So it must not have been a very good game for us. Quincy Yarbrough has now become a 70 overall running back. It has taken two and a half years to get him to this point. We might start to see him get a few more carries now with him reaching this milestone. We will make the move here at third down running back, putting him over Jason Huntley. It's rarely boring when we take on Arizona and we have defeated them again. It's win number three on the season. Again, where are the rushing yards? They're just not happening like I had hoped. I thought it would take a step forward this year. 36 yards for Ahmed, 12 for Jonathan Wood. We're not even trying that hard, 
but Tylen Wallace, 6 for 91. Tyler Johnson, 60 and a score. We'll take that. So we dropped this Rams game, 24-16. Again, not rushing for much success, but Quincy Yarbrough did catch a touchdown in this game. Had two catches for 43 yards. Strong arm upgrade this time. Pat Whitworth plus two more medium. I don't know what it is with him, but the ratings I want to go up never do. Until like the 17th upgrade. One development I can't really explain this year is that we have actually regressed at running the football. We're now the second worst team in that department. 796 rushing yards. The averages are down across the board. I don't even know if Whitworth is running as much as he did a season ago. If we check out the rushing stats, the attempts are probably pretty similar. For whatever reason, though, we're not having success with Savan Ahmed down to 3.4 yards per carry. I didn't expect this to get worse, and his longest run is 11 yards. So close to a win in week 12, and this time we actually did run the football better. Let's see how we did it. Whitworth, two touchdown throws in this game, and then Jonathan Wood making the start 64 yards. Not super efficient, we just ran the ball a ton. 17 runs for Whitworth, 7 more for Quincy Yarbrough, so still not all that impressive. Tyler Johnson, pretty good day for him. We're running out of time to raise the bar this year and to win more than five games. We're still stuck at three victories. Detroit should have been a better matchup for us, but it's another one we don't win. Whitworth gets another upgrade and one more deep accuracy. The three awareness is pretty nice there as well. Trying to get the running game going, we upgrade Jonathan Wood. Acceleration plus agility there is pretty solid. And we do score our fourth win against San Francisco, 27-24. So we're close to our best season ever. Three passing touchdowns for Pat Whitworth. Jonathan Wood, 59 rushing yards. And Huntley got some more carries this time. Could have been a practice injury to Yarbrough. And this is the time of year where... You really do have to pay attention to your stamina. For some reason, it's not really affecting this series for me earlier in the season. Right now, the Seahawks find themselves at 4-11. Two games to go, but I'll spare you another game against Arizona. Let's mix it up here. We have a game against the Jaguars. Pat Whitworth has actually had... An incredible season in a lot of ways. Four total interceptions. I went through the box scores and just didn't realize how few he was throwing. Four picks, 26 touchdowns. And then rushing, he's at 417. Same with Savan Ahmed. Woods at 298. Same average as Ahmed. And then Tyler Johnson, 605. Terrace Marshall, 604. A lot of touchdowns, though, between our top three receivers. That's pretty cool. Defensively, huge year once again for Javen White. Just give him superstar tab. We don't have anybody there yet. Less interceptions and still, like, no pass rush on this team. Whatever happened to Ben Carmen's success? Trevor Lawrence takes on Pat Whitworth, who's putting together an impressive second season, and I'm excited to see how far he goes in this series. I don't know yet how many seasons we're going to go, but I have to see, like, the peak. Where does he end up in, like, his mid to late 20s? Because that could ultimately help take us to the next level as well. The main weaknesses, I think, with developing this team is going to be the offensive line because without a higher dev, there is really a hard limit on how good they can be. And then everything else, I feel like we could develop a lot more on offense. Maybe we've gotten so unlucky to have nobody get the star dev and not anybody is even getting a chance. But Whitworth, oh no, what was that? I'm talking you up. It's not time to run into a sack like that. 
Second down and 21 now. A long way to go. Hopefully Whitworth isn't too uh, careless with the football today. Not much on the run there to Huntley. Exactly where you want to be. Third and 20 on the opening drive. Whitworth. He's sacked again. 56 points, Dallas. What happened? Philly. What happened in this game? Seattle takes over now. We are down seven already. We're on the road to five wins, hopefully, and it's not a good start to this one. At the 21-yard line, it's Whitworth, and he hits a receiver on the outside, Tyler Johnson. This is third and ten for Pat Whitworth, and this pass is also caught by Tyler Johnson. Pretty good chance he ends up being our top receiver this year, yardage-wise. 49-yard line now. It's dumped off. There's Donald Parham. Whitworth heads to the air on second down. Again, it's wide open, and this time we get one of the young receivers involved, Kelvin Session. He's got game-breaking speed. I want him to get some more chances. We haven't really developed that receiver yet with that high speed, like 92, 93, or above. Catch and run here for Parham to the 18. Whitworth moves to 6 of 7 on the day. Again, third down for Seattle. Just need three yards here. No big deal. And Whitworth is off the mark trying to go to the end zone. I think we blocked the punt. So we're actually going to take the lead now. Jaguars had a three and out. And we get lucky. And we haven't been able to do that well enough in this series. Let's pick it up with the defense now. Trying to slow down Trevor Lawrence and a bunch of players they've kept around this entire series. There's LaVisca Chenault, James Robinson. There is Miles Jack still on this team. And Lawrence dumps this off on the outside. And that is a gain of 10. Here's Lawrence to the air again. Complete to Chenault. And he is close to the end zone. Inside run, too easy for Jacksonville, and they have retaken the lead. Rejoining the offense here around midfield as Seattle trails by four, trying to run this. Ahmed left side, that's enough for a first down. Heading to the air on first and 10. The deep ball off the mark. Not on the same page at all. I thought that was picked. Usually in those situations, the defensive back has a better idea of where the football is than the receiver. At the 44, we'll try it again on second down. Pressure's there. Pass caught. Nobody covered him. Number 47. I still don't know who he is. Wait, that's the fullback. Andrew Arietta getting some tight end snaps. All right, first and 10, a little play fake now. Whitworth had no idea he was about to get drilled. Donald Parham, keep underestimating the speed. He should have been taken down so much earlier, and he took it all the way to the one, almost scored it. So now, from one yard out. Oh, come on. Are we the Raiders here? Well, I've seen how this goes. The ball is about to be tipped and intercepted on third and goal. Or not. Touchdown, Donald Parham. I like the tight ends we have on this team. They're both playmakers. Let's take this game into the second half. The Jaguars have retaken the lead again. It's 21 to 20. Defense has to step up and get some stops here. Lawrence, 20 to 24, only 127. I really hope that sim stat bug is fixed here soon. I'm tired of these low passing stats. Pressure on the way. Lawrence knows what to do, and it's on target. First down. Just 
Just not enough pressure here. And bouncing off contact, taking it to the 11. Nice play. The inability to create a pass rush in this series is another weakness. It's the trench play all the way around. The offensive line makes more sense because we can't really upgrade them. There's Eddie Goodwin. As soon as you complain about the pass rush is when you're going to get some finally. 21-20. Trying to come up with a stop here. But we have gotten Star Dev along the D-line. I just can't understand the low sack counts. Like, there hasn't even been the lucky season yet where somebody gets seven or eight. Third down here for Lawrence. Retreating. How'd he get away from that? Throws it away. What I'm also thinking about doing is doing some more rapid seasons in an episode. Maybe simulating the whole thing at a time. As we've gone through now, this will be the fifth season of the experiment. But maybe an episode where I get through a few really quickly unless something major happens just to speed up the process here now he's going to keep it Whitworth wants the first down and did not get it play fake now out to the right dumped off there goes Hunter Bryant first down a lot more inside the 35 Another play action, and Whitworth is intercepted! Jumped in front of Tyler Johnson. It's just the fifth interception he's thrown this season. We were on such a roll, too. The offense looked awesome. I love the play action. But we know how little the room for error is with this team. And now the Jaguars take it back. And DJ Chark has a one-play touchdown to make it a two-possession game. On top of that, Whitworth has been intercepted again on the following possession. And the Jacksonville Jaguars now will increase their lead, I think. They went for it, got a touchdown. It's an 18-point game. So this hasn't been a big breakout season. We've regressed in some categories that I was not counting on. And we dropped this game to Jacksonville. They put up 41 points, and we really couldn't slow them down offensively. So two more interceptions then for Pat Whitworth to go with two touchdowns, but three for Lawrence. Just could not force stops or turnovers today. How many times did they punt? That would be zero. We only punted once though. The season ends with us dropping another game to Arizona, bringing us to four and 13 on the season. Not a huge improvement. And the episode to me would feel a bit incomplete if we just kind of ended it here. So I want to work on getting into the next season and speed this up. All right, it's been 15, 16 episodes, whatever it is. Whitworth has continued to develop really well. He is now a 69 overall. Soon he's going to be the highest rated quarterback on the roster. And in two years, this is really good progress. And here are his stats from year one to year two, which saw improvements in touchdowns, interceptions, completion percentage, as you would expect. And his rushing success fell off a little bit. So we end up with the same amount of wins as last year and our offensive yardage dropped off from 47-37 to 44-52. The passing game which isn't my priority, did end up doing better, but I'm more concerned by the running game actually being worse. And we ended up with only the 31st rushing offense. Points-wise, I mean, 20 to 20.5 is basically no improvement. Rush defense got a lot worse. Last year was our best, 1,911 yards allowed. This year, all the way to 2355, 
it's our second best but it's not good 500 points allowed this is this is the tough one because it's our worst in the last four years it's the worst since the first year of the experiment 17 sacks whatever and third down conversions probably not very good wow 47 that was actually like where we improved the most this year red zone touchdowns 30 that's another series high and then turnover differential i expected regression here after leading the league in interceptions last year but we didn't cause many turnovers or we didn't have many on our side so positive five is a series record so pat whitworth 29 passing touchdowns that is obviously the best we've ever done it's overall the best touchdown to interception ratio of the series i did change running backs at some point so our leading rusher is actually both savan ahmed and pat whitworth at 465 Tyler Johnson was one of our highest leading receivers ever. Our best was Hunter Bryant, who had 774 back in year three. This year, 702 and eight touchdowns. We're used to this from Javen White. He puts up huge numbers, 139 tackles, two sacks, two interceptions. And the same thing for Ulysses Gilbert, who put up almost an identical stat line. If we check out career stats now, here's where things are. And Whitworth already has more touchdowns than both Jamie Newman and Cole McDonald. And he almost has them beat combined where they have 57 in, you know, over 600 more passing attempts. So the passing game, whole different level right now with Whitworth. Running game, Savan Ahmed, 2,500 yards so far receiving hunter bryant 301 career catches 2900 yards and 21 touchdowns tackling javen white 574 tackles six sacks six picks a lot of interceptions for these defenders hey let's go we have hunter bryant at star dev he's put up seasons similar to this one and stayed at normal dev but he is the first star dev player on offense of the entire series it took a whole five years i can't believe it took that long now defensively we i don't think anybody lost it oh wow first superstar player javen white at 29 years old first ever superstar on the team this year, the Carolina Panthers are the Super Bowl champions. Brian Burns is the MVP. Lamar Jackson, the MVP of the league, was on the Ravens, who lost the Super Bowl. So we'll sign Cole McDonald, but we'll let Jamie Newman go. I think McDonald's a good backup for Pat Whitworth, and we'll try to find a new quarterback to just develop as the number three guy. I think we'll let Jason Huntley go now. It's been a pretty good run, but we want some other running backs to get touches. We do re-sign Tyler Johnson. I think I'll let Tylen Wallace go as I'm playing some other receivers who have a bit more speed. There's a bug here where it shows the same player for multiple players, so you have to cycle through menus to fix that. But like Devontae Wilkinson, I want to develop him. I wanted to play Kelvin Session more. 29 years old. Sign him anyway. Donald Parham Jr. Two-year deal. Nick Algretti. He is regressing. Do we maybe think about moving on with some new linemen? Might not be a bad call now. We'll let him go. But keep around Logan Springs for now. Like somebody such as Jeremiah Colvin could start at left guard. He's a 68 overall right now. I think that at 23 years old, we could get him to be a lot higher rated. Let's go with a three-year deal for him. We'll let Kenny Willekes go, and we're going to try to switch things up more along the D-line and try to figure out the problems there. Bryce Hall might be the highest paid player on the team as he is going to get 
Over $8 million a year is our best corner. We're actually going to lose our first star dev player as J.R. Reed did not want to sign this deal and he's going to test free agency. But he is also our third highest rated safety or actually fourth. So the way I'm handling this now is I'm going to obviously still release the players that are drafted for us. But if I release them, Sim, and there's still like, you know, Dion Goodwin is available and nobody else signed him. He's under a 70, so I'll keep him eligible. I'll just say that anybody 70 and above that we had drafted and then cut will be ineligible to be signed. So I'm giving the CPU this week to sign any of those players and sometimes even the higher rated ones don't get signed like we saw with that really good running back jerome hill well let's go to free agency now we gotta get lucky one of these years with somebody being available that can make a huge difference geo field 73 overall i mean that's a pretty high overall for one year of experience 226 is pretty good size power back i have not had much success developing power backs in a long time but at 73 we're signing him markel Ayers from texas we've got to get some more edge rushers good athlete 84 speed 84 acceleration 79 finesse moves i like the start of this offseason for us and wide receiver Nigel Jenkins does seem to be too good to be a free agent. 90 speed, 95 acceleration, good underneath routes, ball carrier vision. Yes, running back skills. It could work. I'm not moving his position yet. And how about a rookie tight end to develop as well as we get older at that position? 6'6", 268, Larry Compton with 80 speed. Here are the preseason stats, and I think this year we'll have just a two-quarterback team and not have that third quarterback spot so somebody else can just develop at another position. If we have to go to our third quarterback, I mean, I'll just sign somebody and they can figure it out, or we'll just move a running back to quarterback because who cares? Jonathan Wood, 3.1 a carry. Where is the rushing yards? Where did they go? This average is just dropping some good receiving production though and we'll see with more and jenkins who kind of emerges there jenkins is younger just two sacks all preseason nothing impressive there no interceptions we'll make a signing here to start the season 70 overall eric williams for washington 78 block shed we could definitely add some d-line depth Another defensive lineman. How about Kane Dodge for the Lions? 80 power move with pretty decent speed acceleration as well. Someone's got to eventually get like five sacks, right? We're also going to bring in Marco Wayne, but not to stay at safety. I want to move him to corner. A lot of the corners in this game, for whatever reason, have like high 80 speed, but Wayne has 91 good zone coverage and come on he's 6'4 this could be one of those interesting ways to try and make progress in this series is finding those key position change candidates who could be a lot better somewhere else when i saw marco wayne's skill set that one felt pretty obvious 68 overall two years into his career about to upgrade again at least but He's pretty intriguing. Maybe that's the next chapter. Position switches, seeing what happens. Here's a receiver I'd like to see at running back. Kadeem McPherson, 85 catching with 91 speed. Good receiving back. Visions at 75. He can break tackles at 80. 83 change of direction. 99 injury. I think we give him a chance. And he's 6'3". And our next player who will change positions is J.C. Mays, 6'1", 222. He's moving from safety to linebacker with his 92 speed. 
I think that I skipped over the best player to change positions, but now I've tested it out. Nigel Jenkins, 82 overall running back. Are you telling me the only way we can do this series is if I can find like a Perry Cummings level position swap? Now he does not have the speed of Perry Cummings, but he's 82 overall at running back. I changed his position. Now there looks to be a morale boost here or something. But he just became the highest rated offensive player we ever had. Just like that. He just showed up. Well, that is going to definitely change some things. Because I have to see him fail now at running back before I don't play him here. I feel like this idea has brought a little more energy here to the series. And while I was going to end it here, we're just going to make this a really big episode. By the way... How's the audio sounding today? Brand new audio setup. Still trying to figure out some settings. Don't exactly know what I'm doing because audio is confusing to me. But I hope it's better. It's been a long time coming. We beat the Chiefs and I might post like three episodes tomorrow. Could we actually compete with them? Probably not. But I have to see... This position change, Nigel Jenkins at running back. Could he be the difference maker that this series has been waiting for? Well, the new era is upon us. We sat Patrick Mahomes twice on the opening drive. We waste no time. Nigel Jenkins, first career carry, I believe. Gain of two. He's going to be our third down back as well. He catches the ball extremely well. And on second down, Whitworth throws outside. Oh, man. I want to know how this is still happening. They have not done enough to coverage to fix this. They're playing quarters coverage here. And Tyler Johnson is just going to command all kinds of attention. Like he's Randy Moss or Jerry Rice going downfield. No one's going to stay underneath here. So this uh, corner here, he does have to bail. But maybe this defender should think about Terrace Marshall. Really good job, though, drawing the triple coverage. We'll take yards any way we can get them against Kansas City. Pass caught. Nice catch and run here to the 44. It's Hunter Bryant. Now it's third down and three. Jenkins is the running back. Can we make a play here? Keep the drive moving. First down, Marshall. Now get the running game going. We were second worst a year ago. Run the ball. That's actually a pass. On the edge of field goal range. Let's keep it moving here. Got to get seven. Jenkins to the right flat. Whitworth throwing deep downfield. That's a catch. Both feet not down. So close for Tyler Johnson. And Joey Pitts. Missed the field goal. Kansas City takes over. Glenn Farley sacks Mahomes. We have sacked Mahomes three times in the first quarter. Trying to get out of the end zone here. Quick pass through the hands. Just face it, you have to run the football. Pete Carroll was right all along. Straight ahead, it's Wood. Gain of two. Give the ball to Nigel Jenkins. Give the fans what they want to see. That is the fullback dive. The Russ Watson special. Not quite. The Chiefs finally scored. You're not going to shut this team out. So it's 7-0 as we take over. Over the middle. And there's Marshall for the first down. There's an inside run. He's got some space. And it's Jenkins to the 49. By the way, with these position changes, I didn't change anybody's number. There are basically no rules now. Defensive linemen wear number 8. Linebackers wear number 14. Third down and 1. We have Jenkins, of course, wearing 5. Reminds me of Reggie Bush. 
Oh, come on. The defense is playing hard. It's only 14 nothing. You have to score some points. Come on, offense. Here's Whitworth heading to the air again. Spinning, throwing, right on target just as I drew it up. So I think Whitworth has gotten pretty good. Very few interceptions a year ago. He's put up a lot of touchdowns in two seasons. We have to develop some playmakers around him. We now have an 81 overall running back. Two minutes to play now in the first half. We head to the air. Again to the middle, Marshall. Second and ten. Outside. What a throw from Pat Whitworth. And he hooks up with Hunter Bryant in impressive fashion. Best drive so far. We're down to the Chiefs 23-yard line. You can still consider running the football, by the way, but we are not. We throw it, and the screens are terrible in this game. Fifty-four seconds to go. This pass is caught. It's a first down for Tyler Johnson. These two top receivers are definitely getting open consistently. Some nice open looks here for Whitworth. Now 49 seconds to not screw this up. Again, we look to throw it. And it's Jenkins! Touchdown! I knew it was going to be open right there. They sent too much. Nigel Jenkins, first touchdown. We cut the lead in half. You have my attention. We're on to the second half. Jenkins has picked up a couple first downs rushing on this possession as we join the offense. And that ball carrier vision has to get better. He had a lane there. The unfortunate part of him being high rated but having a couple ratings to work on is that it's going to take a while to get there. So to get that ball carrier vision boost, it's going to take waiting for that upgrade and then hopefully getting lucky with it. But now on third down, caught again, Terrace Marshall. Now I know what I'm titling this video and what the focus is going to be. And you're going to watch it and be like, when is this showing up? What is this clickbait? About this position change. Like we just finished the whole season. Nothing happened. Whitworth gets a block. He's inside the 25. Don't be afraid to hand the football off. Just reminding you it's possible. Second down. Quick pass. Forget about running the football. It's Hunter Bryant. We head to the air on first and goal. It's going to be a touchdown. It's Paul Moore. Hyped him up like last episode. We've tied the game against Kansas City. This is suddenly a very exciting episode. I just didn't think we could end it with that first season or that fifth season ending. Mahomes has to dump it off. Wow, stepped out of bounds. That was third and ten. The Seattle Seahawks have actually made it tough on Kansas City in this game. Our defense has actually shown up. So we've taken over in a tie game week one at home against the Chiefs. And it's a play fake. Whitworth has time. Dumps it off. Jenkins catch and run. Flying across the 35-yard line. Pass caught once again. Tyler Johnson gain of four. He and Marshall have caught the bulk of the passes here. Five for Johnson. Third and three. We've done a pretty good job on third down so far. Quick pass. Caught again. Pull more. At the 50-yard line, a little screen set it up. These still don't work. Five catches, though, for Jenkins. He's going to have a huge workload in this offense. Third down and 15. You're going to try it again? Well, a little bit better blocking the stiff arm, but the drive stalls. 
Kansas City did nothing on their next drive. And we just had Whitworth hook up with Johnson for 25. 33-yard line. Under nine minutes to play. And we take over again. Here's the pressure. Whitworth. No! On first down, you can't take that play. Jenkins right side, some recovery yardage there. It's a gain of seven. And third down and 17. Now you get 10 yards here, maybe a field goal. So let's see what we try here. Again, the screen pass. Now that I think I'm going to stick with this playbook, I have to mess around with the game plan a little bit, probably. You're kidding me. Joey Pitts can hit from 57. Whatever you say. 17, 14. Can we continue to slow down Patrick Mahomes in the Kansas City offense? We lead in the fourth quarter. I can't believe it. Mahomes caught first down to start the drive. Let's go. Let's do Mahomes to the air on second down. He gets outside the pocket and he should have the first down. Spun ahead to the 48. Gustin there got to him. Chiefs going empty. Still down three. Six minutes left. Mahomes middle and a penalty marker down that should be good for us it was after the catch though so it's a spot foul and it's a first and nine cost them a little field position is all Mahomes gets it back right here Not getting pressure on Mahomes, and that was so close to being picked off by Gilbert. McCole Hardman is still with Kansas City. He hauled that in. New set of downs. Oh, so close again. Now they'll look to run it. Big opening there, and a missed tackle, but then a somersault. Now we're showing some pressure. Do we send it this time? Doesn't matter. It's a run. We're trying to rip the ball out. We have the right idea here. Go for the win. Make the big play happen. Huge third and three now. We're right around three minutes left to go. Mahomes heads to the air. He steps up. Fires back. Corner. Out of bounds. And they have to kick the field goal. That means this game could very well come down to our offense. Not Patrick Mahomes. We're tied right now. Two and a half minutes to go in the game. And it's a play fake. We have some fun play action calls. That wasn't really one of them. I don't want this ball going back to Kansas City. Third and ten. Bunch on the right. Chiefs not showing any pressure here. We got to make a throw. Pressure's there. Whitworth, deep downfield. It's a catch. Oh, Terrace Marshall. What a play. And the drive continues, but they're challenging it. Did Terrace Marshall get both feet in bounds? Yeah, he did. Done deal. The play stands. Good try. Brand new drive now. 46-yard line. I like the run call here. Right side, Jenkins. Falls ahead to the line of scrimmage. I don't want Kansas City to touch the football again. We can make that happen. Second and nine. Pressure inside. Penalty marker. That's in the area of roughing. Yes! Let's go! We got the catch. We got the roughing. 24-yard line. This is where you want Nigel Jenkins to run it. Two, three times, get the first down. He takes it inside, but they're all over it. A key part of this right now is Kansas City had to burn a timeout losing that challenge. So it's one less time they can stop the clock. As they do call one here. 
but no running success on first or second down. So on third and 12, you might have to throw it outside. But we're going to keep it. He's got some room. Gets a block. Arietta. He's fighting. He's there. And I think he's short by a half yard. Oh, what a play. And we're going to play it safe. Oh, a quarterback sneak here would be incredible. But we're going to take the three and hope it's enough. A turnover seals the deal. A minute 18 left to go. Mahomes, no timeouts and Madden time management. He's out to his left. Throws on the move, complete. Hardman broke a tackle, he picks up 14. Now the clock is going to be running a lot. 52 seconds, Mahomes, strike, caught again, Hardman, they're close. 36 seconds. Not yet in field goal range as Mahomes fakes. He's hit. It is tipped in. It is incomplete. And it was actually tipped by the intended receiver who then did not catch the football. And it's second and 10, 30 seconds to go. They're targeting like the 39-yard line. Quick pressure, swing pass, big tackle at the 41. And they've got a... Just mess this up here. Nine seconds left. Mahomes, end zone, intercepted! We're going to beat Kansas City! I can't believe it! Kansas City going for the win. Bryce Hall, interception. We are going to defeat the Kansas City Chiefs. It may just be the biggest win of this series. And I'm pretty sure I promised like four episodes if we pulled it off. Will you take two tomorrow? Because I wasn't even counting on this. I just don't think I could do four in one day. But you know what? Two for the biggest win. The biggest position change. And a huge surprise. What an episode of the series. What a wild ride that was. Hope you enjoyed the episode, everybody. It is going to be a big one. Again, hope the audio was good. I have a brand new setup, all new equipment I've never used before. It's the first video I'm recording with this new equipment. And I'm sure I still have to uh, figure a few things out. But I hope you enjoyed today's episode. There should be more to look forward to. And I suppose I better get working on those two episodes for tomorrow. Thank you all for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and have a great day. I'll be back soon.